of shit A piece of shit Oh, Jay You suck What's up, everybody? This is uh, me, Jake Letizia. Uh, welcome to another episode of Talking to Myself, the podcast where I uh, I just stare at a camera and talk to myself. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. Had a show at Pine Box Rock Shop the other night, this past Friday, uh, and it went well. It went really well. Everyone had a lot of fun. We were able to pack the, ho- the house out. Pack the hashama. Oh, fuck. I'm already like a... Two minutes into the podcast, I'm having a stroke. Pack that shut shut up. No, we were able to get a full crowd. Again, it was our second show. The show is called Jake and Josh Are Not Funny. Uh, we're trying to put it up every month or every other month. We don't know what we're doing yet. So far, it's been every other month. We had one in um, uh, January, and then we had one just now in March, and... Uh, We'll either have another one in April or another one in uh, May. We'll see. Or maybe May and April. Who the fuck knows? But if you didn't come out, um, that's a shame. But you can always come to the next one. And uh, if you did come out, I love you dearly. And you guys were a great fucking audience. Uh, It was really funny because it was a very intimate audience. Because it wasn't quite filled out yet. And then right when we started the show, I was literally saying to the crowd, All right, it's going to be a nice, fun intimate show we got a light crowd but it's still gonna be good and then right then like 10 people walked in i went never mind it's gonna be a big fucking show let's rev it up dude (laughs) and it was a fucking fun show it was great everybody on it was amazing perry gross maggie crane uh ted diner and uh, me and josh always love hosting and uh yeah it was fucking awesome those are all great comedians you should follow them on their respective social medias and, uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know when the next show is, and you should you should come. Uh, I mean, if you listen to this show, you are already fucking psychotic, but I love you for it. <laughs> and if you're listening to this show, you might want to come see me live. So come see me live uh, at the next Jake and Josh Are Not Funny in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, yes! <laughs> Sorry, I've been watching a lot of Brody Stevens uh, recently because, uh, you know. I don't know if you guys know Brody Stevens. He's a he was an amazing comedian. He recently um decided he didn't like life anymore and uh he's no longer with us and uh yeah, that's a shame. But um anyway, <laughs> that's a dark start. Anyway, let's not talk about that. <laughs> uh let's talk about my beard instead. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Listen, man, Okay, so this is two months of of this so far, right? I don't know if this if that's impressive or not. I don't know. I don't know how fast beards are supposed to grow, but I had a solid like week or two where I was like, you know what, this is fine. I like this beard, and now I'm right back to fucking hating it. And that's what I learned is having a beard. It's you going, this is fucking disgusting. I don't want this on my face anymore. And then other days you go, you know what, I look pretty good. It's not so bad. But right now I'm I'm in a fucking very pure state of I don't want this shit anymore and every time I look in the mirror I grab the fucking clippers and I'm about to shave it off and I go no 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 just put them the fuck down just let it keep going man figure it out see what length really bothers you because right now I don't know it's like at a length where it's okay but it also is kind of annoying there's just so much grooming dude I don't want to groom that much okay what I usually do is I buzz it down to a very light beard. It kind of looks like stubble. It kind of looks like a beard. People are, don't really know what the fuck I'm doing. But they're like, all right, he seems okay looking enough. And it works for me. But with this, it's like you got the stray hairs. You got to cut them off. And then you're like, did I cut too many stray hairs? And then you're like, how do I do I buzz it? I don't know how to groom a beard with a buzzer. Without shaving the whole fucking thing off. I don't know what I'm doing is what I'm telling you. But then again, that's that's why I want to keep it. Because I want to figure it out. You know? Every time you do something, you start off not knowing what the fuck you're doing. 
But if you just give up, you're never going to figure it out. So if I shave my beard off now, I'll never figure out how to groom a fucking beard. So you know what? Yeah, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. Also, I've been growing it out because I want to film a sketch that I'm not going to tell you about. But I want to film something where I need this beard. So I'm at least going to hold out for that. Okay, I'm going to film that. And then after that, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. I might just shave that shit off immediately. I might go fucking clean shaven. I haven't been clean shaven in maybe three years. Wow, that's crazy. Not since I was a clown. <laughs> I might not have been clean shaven since I was a fucking clown, a birthday clown. I, I was a birthday clown, everyone. I was. And that was a weird fucking job. My introduction to that job was, uh, oh man, this is fucked up. This is what happened. This is, this is what happened with that job. I was at my friend, uh, my friend's apartment. He was having like a, a monopoly party, uh, which is always fun if you sit by the bank. Cause that's what I do. I sit by the bank and I steal the money. Listen, that night I stole all the fu- That night, dude, first of all. My friend told me that party was BYOB, right? So I show up and he goes, oh, you brought beer? I go, yeah. He goes, oh, cool, man. Bring it over by all the other drinks. We're all just sharing. Excuse me, man? You said BYOB, which means I bring my drink and I fucking drink it. I'm not sharing with everybody else. If I knew this was a sharing party, I wouldn't have brought fucking alcohol. I don't... (laughs) I would have stolen other people's shit or not stolen because it's sharing. Or I would have gotten a shittier, cheaper beer if I knew. I bought beer for myself. I mean, it was back this. I was like 21. So I was drinking Blue Moons back then, which is fucking. I don't even drink Blue Moon anymore. Now I'm a stout or a good wheat beer kind of guy. Blue Moon is wheat beer if you've only drank Bud Light. That's what it is. If you've only ever drank Bud Light in your life and then you're like, oh, here's a wheat beer, you give somebody a blue moon and they go, wow, this is amazing. And they have an actual fucking wheat beer like an Allagash or something. They're like, oh my God, blue moon tastes like shit, dude. It tastes like a fucking puddle. (laughs) Dude, that's true. Blue moon tastes like a fucking puddle. It's thick and acidic and it feels like it shouldn't go into your body. It's disgusting. It's heavy. It's... I don't like it anymore. But anyway, at the time, I liked Blue Moon, brought it to the party, right? And as soon as I put my beer down, somebody else from the party grabs one of my Blue Moons. Because it's sharing, right? And not only does she grab my Blue Moon, but she sits right next to me at the fucking table. Okay? So throughout the night, she's drinking Blue Moons. And not only is she drinking them, but she keeps going, Mmm, it's so good. What, dude? First of all... Blue Moon doesn't taste good enough where you go, mmm, so good. I've never had a beer, I've never had a beer where I drank and went, mmm, so good. I think you're just an asshole if you do that. I've never ate something where I was like, mmm, so good. I think if you do that, you're just an asshole and you want people to like go, oh, really? Is like, what a weird way to draw attention to yourself. Oh, good. No, dude, calm down. When you drink something, this is what you should do. This is all you should do. This is the most you should ever do if you drink something. That's it. That's the most. A little nod of like, yeah, that was, was, yeah, I like that. Mm, Not. Oh, so good. It's this beer that I didn't even fucking bring. That's a very fucking generic beer that anyone can drink. It's not really that extreme or cool of a beer at all blue moon it's a very fucking branded bullshit beer Mm, so good fuck you and then she takes another one dude there's only six in the pack and she's already had two of them and i brought six for me which already means i'm two beers fucking cheap dude i'm two beers short right now (laughs) i couldn't think of the word short i'm two beers cheap right now man Anyway, so obviously, I was a little flustered, so I was like, fuck it. So I kept stealing money from the fucking bank in Monopoly. And uh, somehow no one noticed, probably too busy drinking my fucking beer to notice that I'm robbing the bank. And then at the end, 
My friend finds out, and he laughs and thinks it's hysterical, and then everyone there is angry. What do you- it's Monopoly, dude! Who gives a fuck? That we weren't playing for actual money? Why are you angry? You were stealing from the bank? Yeah, dude, we're adults playing Monopoly. Why would I not steal from the bank? What am I, eight years old, dude? What am I, eight years old, obeying the rules in a game that we shouldn't be playing anymore? We're fucking all in our 20s. What are we doing playing Monopoly? This is the dumbest shit I've ever done in my life. I'm only here because I love this kid because he's my best friend. And he's he's silly enough to want to play Monopoly. And guess what? He even acknowledges that we're too old for this shit and is laughing about me stealing from the bank. So what the fuck are you angry about? Anyway, clowning. <laughs> what a fucking detour we took. Ooh, I like this. This is a high-energy podcast right now. This is fucking wild and off the rails. Um, so my friend's telling me uh, about clowning. Someone asked him about clowning. Because him and then another clown were there. And uh, somebody asked him about, like, oh, did you hear what happened? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, you should tell the story. So I'm immediately intrigued. Also, I was 21... Uh, I was still in college. I didn't have any sort of job. Um, I just moved to the city. So, like, I needed money. I needed to figure out how to get some money. And uh, I needed a job that, like, didn't, you know, take up too much time because I had to fucking go to class. So he goes... So he tells me the story about how they have all these bunnies in cages because one of the magic tricks use a bunny. So there were a couple bunnies that were, like all fucked up and like, you know, like they either like were missing an eye or they like, you know, they had some sort of deformities or something. And so, uh, the person who runs it, George, apparently told one of the head clowns to, uh, to give it like to, to kill the, the, what's it called? The, the, the ones with deformities. So he gave them like rat poison or something. And then what happened was, since they're all in cages together, the ones who got rat poison, like, got real savage and weird. And then all the, like, a bunch of rabbits just started fucking eating each other. And apparently there was like a rabbit bloodbath in the back of this fucking clown place. In the fucking basement of this clown place, wherever they keep the rabbits. And I started laughing hysterically because that's how I react to really fucked up things. I just go, what the fuck, dude? Because I also was thinking, like, you work at this place where they, they just fucking, a bunch of rabbits just got devoured because this guy wanted to get rid of the deformed ones? This is the most fucked up place I've ever heard of. What the fuck? And my friend, me and my friend were both cackling because we are psychopaths and we... I mean, it's not, we don't think it's funny, we just laugh at really fucked up things because we don't know how to process it, so we just are like, what the fuck? And, uh, I went, how much do you get paid for that job? And he was like, 25 an hour, and I went, what? And he goes, yeah, I go, how much do you make in a weekend? He's like, I like anywhere between like 300 and 500 bucks. And I was like, can I sign up? <laughs> It sounds so fucked up. I don't know how to explain it. I just, that was such a crazy story and I was 20 and you get paid a lot for that job that I was like, I don't know, as a person who wants to, uh, that was before I even did stand up. Oh, wow. That was a long fucking time ago. That was before the first time I tried stand up. I think I was about to start taking a stand up comedy class in college, but I was just like, as a person who like is, who writes as a writer, I guess, I was like, I'm going to get some weird fucking stories out of this place, and I won't work there for a long time, it'll be okay, hey, if anything, I'll gain some information, I could close them the fuck down, we'll see what happens, uh, but I was like, alright, yeah, I'll do it, so he set me up on an interview, and he goes, okay, you'll be meeting with Adolf, and I was like, what? And he was like, oh, his name's George, though, and I was like, what are you talking about? And he goes, the boss of the place, his name is Adolf, but he wants people to call him George. <laughs> so again, that was in interesting to me. So I was like, I got to do this. What? I got to see what the fuck this is about. So then I, I went to the job and uh, 
on the job, I, it was like five of us. I came up, I, sh- I can't, I showed up late. I was like the last person there. And there was like five or six of us all being interviewed at the same time. And then this guy who said his name was George a bunch, uh, this big kind of rotund guy, uh, who looked nice enough, but he looked like there was something underneath where he could really like get fucking mean. He, uh, did the interview and then he was like, Hey, you guys, you know, stay after, uh, if you want to stay after to watch the training, cause there's a week of clown training. He, he gave us the whole thing. He's like, God. And it was also weird. Cause it's <laughs> the whole thing was split into gender roles. It was like, uh, there are, Guy clowns and female clowns. Usually the guys are Bobo and the girls are Bubbles, but you can make whatever name you want. And the guys have to, uh, the guys do balloon animals, um, cotton candy, and character. Uh, and a character is like a mascot outfit. And they would just, they just stole mascots from like Disney and stuff. Like they were, you're not technically allowed to dress up as Disney characters without their sanction, but, like, people could order, like, Mickey Mouse or Elsa from Frozen to be at their party, and, uh, if it wasn't a, if it wasn't a mascot outfit, like, if it was something like Elsa, the, uh, female clown would do it, but if it was any other thing, Minnie Mouse, Mickey Mouse, anybody else, Thomas the Tank Engine, the guy had to fucking do it, and Thomas the Tank Engine, let me tell you, is fucking bullshit, because you're not allowed to stand up, because you're a fucking train car, so you're literally crawling on your hands and knees while fucking a bunch of kids kick and punch you. Dude, I have some fucking crazy stories from that. I don't, I mean I don't I don't want to make the whole podcast about this though, about clowning. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna come up with some stories and I'll, I'll do a I'll do a bigger I'll do a whole clown episode. How about that? That was a weird job, man. That was a weird fucking job, but it paid good goddamn money, and I got a real a lot of fucking weird stories from that job. Just, like, giant parties. I had to dress up as Spongebob one time at a block party. And uh, the Spongebob outfit is giant. It's a big fucking square. And this woman took me into their basement apartment. And she took me into a bathroom uh, probably this big. Like, like, eight by two. Like, it was fucking... (laughs) <laughs> like, no, not even, like, four by two, like, four, four feet deep and two feet wide, and I had to put on this fucking Spongebob outfit that was bigger than the bathroom, and also the bathroom didn't have a door, it just had a curtain, so I was, like, falling out of the bathroom while putting on this Spongebob outfit, and then I had the Spongebob outfit on, and then I went out to this block party, which was, like, a fucking, it was, like, 50 to 100 kids were at this party, and uh, I was in SpongeBob, and these kids start like playing with me, and they start playing a little rough, which I understand. When I was a little kid, I used to like attack my older cousins, um, cause that's what you do. You're like roughhousing and stuff. And these kids, I remember these kids were like attacking me so aggressively that I had to, I had to say something, and I, <laughs> I just in the middle of being SpongeBob went, "Hey, stop kicking me." And they went, what? And they ran in the other direction. They were freaked out. SpongeBob laid down the law. Don't do that. They, one minute, they just see like, hey, ha, SpongeBob. And then all of a sudden, SpongeBob's like, don't ever, don't touch me like that. Okay, you better calm down. And these kids are like, oh, SpongeBob's an authoritative parent. (laughs) SpongeBob's my dad. Ah!" And they ran away. That was a weird party. Oh, my God. Then there was this other kid who got a balloon animal from me, right? And picture, it's 50 kids in line for balloon animals. This kid comes up to me, gets a balloon animal. It pops, right? So he comes up later in the party when I'm done with balloon animals. And I, and he was a sweet kid, so I made him another balloon animal, right? And he's he's going around with it. And then it pops again, right? And then we're, I have to start the magic show because every, every party ends with a magic show, right? And both clowns are a part of that show and we both need each other to perform the tricks in that show. I'm sorry if you're lost right now. I'm kind of going all, all over the fucking place. But this kid in the audience starts crying, right? Or he's not crying, but he's on the verge of tears. And he's like, my, my balloon broke. I can't. 
And I was like, I can't, I have to do the magic show. But he was so sweet that I ran over right before the magic show started, made another balloon, gave it to him, and went to, and went and ran back to the magic show. And I see in the back of the fucking crowd, this kid pops the balloon again. And then he starts crying. And then he comes over and he's like, can I get another one? I'm like, no, kid. I'm in the show now. Also, how are you popping that many fucking balloons? At a certain point, you're the one popping them, kid. Okay? You're very nice. You're a cute little kid. But I'm not, I can't be making balloons for you all fucking day. That's, that's, what was that? That's four goddamn balloons you popped, okay? At this point, it's you. I'm not. It's not on me to make you another one, dude. Not getting tipped enough for that. Also, it's not your birthday, so you're not the most important kid here. The birthday boy or girl is the most important motherfucker here, okay? And you're not it. Okay, I was told in the contract, make sure the birthday uh, person gets as much shit as they want. All the other kids can go fuck themselves. <laughs> no, it didn't say that. It said you got to be nice to all the kids. Then you have weird shit people hitting on you when you're in a fucking Minnie Mouse costume. You got like, like p uh, adults, adult. It's either like, like teenage, uh, girls or like full grown mothers, like, trying to hit on you while you're clowning for their one year old's birthday party. Also, your kid's one years old. It can't remember things yet. Okay, it literally cannot remember things. Till it's three years old. Okay. Why are you throwing at a big fucking extravagant party? That's not for them. That's for you. And it makes even more sense when you're hitting on the clown at the party that the party's not for your son. It's for you and your loneliness, I guess. <laughs> it's fucked, dude. Old, old husbands hitting on female clowns and old mothers hitting on young male clowns. It's fucking weird and aggressive and I didn't enjoy it. But I made a lot of money and I got a lot of weird stories from it. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Also, they would want you would be in these fucking mascot outfits where you couldn't breathe, you couldn't see, you were just fucking sweating profusely. And then people would want you to take pictures with their kids, right? And you can barely see. So people are handing toddlers to you and you can't even see what you're fucking holding, right? So I was at this one party and this woman fucking shoves their kid into my hand and I'm holding it weird. I'm holding it like... Like, I'm, I'm holding it fucking insane because I can't see it, dude. So I'm just gripping it wherever I can. And I'm holding it all lopsided and shit. And she's like, ah, why are you holding him so weird? Why are you holding him so weird? And I want to say, because I can't fucking see you dumb... You dumb mother... I can't see your kid. You're just... You're handing a, a blind person your child, okay? It's likely I'll drop him. So anyway, I'm fucking holding it as best I can. And then another girl comes over and she's like... She's like... Like, not hugging my leg, but she's like right up against my leg. Because it's... It's fucking... I think it was Mickey Mouse. It's Mickey Mouse, dude. She's like, oh my god, it's a cartoon in real life. She thinks it's really Mickey Mouse. So she's excited, okay? And her mom starts shouting at the little girl, why are you so close to his balls? Get your head away from his balls. You're right in his fucking balls. Don't... Don't say that to your kid. She doesn't know that. She's not thinking about Mickey Mouse having fucking balls. Okay? I'm not a man in this costume. I'm a fucking cartoon character. Don't put that shit in her head. You weird fuck. God damn. Some of these parents, man. What are you doing? Why are you right next to his balls? Because she doesn't think I have any. Because I'm a fucking mouse. <laughs> what are you talking about? Anyway. <laughs> That's my clown shit, dude. I'm almost into the next... I almost did 30 minutes on clowns. Jesus Christ. Maybe it's the, the fact that I'm drinking the green monster, dude. It's got me fucking amped up. 50 grams of sugar in this shit. I should not be drinking this at all. But you know what? Fuck it. I was feeling a little frisky today. I got a fucking sausage, egg, and cheese on a roll. And a goddamn 50 grams of 
too much fucking sugar monster, and I'm feeling it, dude. Now I'm talking about clowning. I'm talking about ra rabbits eating each other, fucking parents screaming get away from his balls to their kids, and, you know, I'm, I'm just speaking about life, you know? Anyway, I might shave my beard. I don't know. <laughs> you got to be clean shaven for that shit. You got to be clean shaven. What are you going to do? Um, what are some of these things that I can... Okay, here's a quick one. Here's one that I think won't... I don't know. Who, who knows? I, I thought the clown shit would be quick. I ended up fucking talking 30 minutes. Anyway... The other night, I called someone the wrong fucking name, and it was devastating. Not to him. He didn't give a fuck. It was devastating to me, because I've known this guy for a while, okay? He's a bar back at a bar that I go to, and me and him have great conversations all the time. Like, like he's a fucking awesome dude, and me and him have very deep, interesting, fun conversations. The kind that you wish you had with more people. And... I was leaving, and he was standing outside, and my brain fucked itself, and it just, because there's an, another bar back that I see a lot, I don't talk to as much, he's a good guy, but I see a lot, so I'm usually saying bye to him, so I said his name, I don't want to say people's names, I'll say Joe and Brian, Brian, uh, Brian's a shitty name, uh, Joe and... Jonathan. I don't know. Jonathan is his real name, but instead I say, Oh, have a good night, Joe. And he looks at me and he goes, You fucked up my name. And I look at him and go, Oh, Jonathan, fuck. And he kind of smiles and I go, Dude, fuck, I'm so sorry. He goes, Ah, that's cool, man. And then I walk away a little bit. I turn to him and go, Ah, I fucked that up. I really fucked that up. And he goes, Dude, it's all good. And I believe that he thinks it's all good, but at the same time, it's not all good, man. I've had so many conversations with that guy. That's fucked up. I should have said his name wrong. And then I just walked away and I shook my head like, I can't, I just gotta feel it. I just gotta feel that fucking mistake. I gotta feel that fucking mistake, dude. And I felt terrible. I felt so fucking bad. All the way home, I was like, God damn it, you fucked up his name, you stupid cunt. I was so mad at myself. I was so mad. But what are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? Oh, I was such a fucking asshole for that. Oh, anyway, I'll, I'll get into it maybe a little bit more after the break. We got a break now because this camera's about to shut off. All right, see you in a second. All right, and we're back. Yeah, so I, I fucked up his name, and I was, I was like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, dude. I, oh, man. Even now, even right now, thinking about it, I feel bad, dude. I feel so bad. I feel like a, excuse me, like a huge fucking asshole. And I kind of am one a little bit. Like, that's the fucked up part. I'm kind of just a fucking dick, man, for doing that. That's not cool. Uh, that's not cool, man. Fuck, now I'm worried that it's dark because the light just changed dramatically in here. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hold on. And we're back. Again. No, yeah, I just wanted to make sure it was a little brighter. Because the fucking sun changed dramatically in here. But it's all good. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter that we broke again because I'm, st I'm still just thinking about it. I'm still thinking about how I fucked up his name. <laughs> oh man, I feel so bad. It's okay. He probably already has forgotten about it. Like, he probably does not give a fuck. But that's the thing, man. You you get attached to things that... There are things that stick with you forever that stick with no one else. You know? That's happened to me multiple times in my life. I... Oh, man. Should I get into this? Okay, so I... I when I was a young kid... I don't think I talked about this on the podcast yet. When I was a young kid, I stole a girl's lunch money. I did, dude. I did that fucking hack bully move and stole a girl's lunch money. But I didn't do it like they do in movies 
I was sitting on the bus next to this girl, okay? Her name's Sam. I won't say her full name, but Sam. And I was on the outside seat, and she was on the inside, and uh, I saw that she had money. It was the end of the day. It was like we were going home from school, and I saw she had money, and I was like, uh, hey, let me get that money. And she was like, what? I was like, let me get your money. She's like, no, it's mine. I need it for lunch tomorrow. I go, no, let me get it. And she's like, no. And I was like, no, give it to me, though. Just give it to me. She's like, no, give me. No, I don't want to give it to you. And I was like, no, no, give me the money, though. (laughs) I just, I just, I just bothered this girl until she gave me the money. And she finally gave it to me. And she had no choice. I was like sitting on the outside of the seat. Like I really fucking pressured this girl to give me her. It was fucked up. It was not a good thing that I did it. And she gave me her money, and I remember the moment she gave me her money, I felt fucking terrible. I felt awful. And then she got off the bus, and then it was just me sitting there, and no one even saw it. It was just a moment that me and her had, and I felt fucking terrible. And I remember for weeks, I would go to school, and... I remember somebody came up to me and said, like, dude, you're in a lot of trouble for what happened with Sam. And I'm like, what? And I don't even remember if, like, if that actually happened or if I just manifested that memory. But I remember, I and also I would have nightmares about it. I had nightmares about robbing this girl of her lunch money or bothering. It's funny because I tell people the story. And they're like, well, you didn't really steal her money. You just kind of were annoying, <laughs> which I guess is true. But, like, I had these nightmares that I was going to get in trouble and that, like, the principal was going to be on me and, like, I, I, I like I knew that I was it was like all of my punishment was gonna be in the confines of school, but like whatever the school equivalent of prison is, that I thought I was going to like school jail, you know, which I guess is like detention. I thought I was gonna get detention, and my parents were gonna get fucking pissed. That's funny too. I never thought of suspension as a punishment. I always just thought detention, because suspension to me was like. All right, dude, I have to come to school? Like, that's fucking sick. I never understood suspension as a punishment. It's only a punishment if your parents are monsters. If your parents are, like, okay people, it's like you have to stay home while your parents are disappointed in you. And But, like, that's not... I mean, you could still go in your room and be by yourself, which is fucking awesome. So I don't really... Maybe, maybe my house just didn't have a good setup for being suspended. I don't know. Anyway, I felt fucking awful, right? And this lived with me for years. Okay, and this happened in, uh, uh, what, fucking nursery school. This happened in, like, first, this was first grade, dude. This was when that kid was fucking trying to cut that, my teacher's fingers off. I told you guys that story. This was first fucking grade. And I felt terrible. I guess this was the, I was, pr- I was practicing fucking, as Theo Vaughn would say, in the dark arts. I was fucking, I was being a real piece of shit. I told that kid that it, uh, I I tried to get on the 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 kickball team over that kid. Remember, it was my friend. Oh man, I was that was like a, a fucking bad year for trying fucked up shit. In first grade, I was just trying every shitty thing I could just to see how it felt. I guess, and turns out every time I did something bad, I felt terrible. And I and and this lasted all the way till high school, man. Like every time I saw her, I would remember that a little bit and feel bad. And my best friend started dating her in high school, right? So I told him about it. And he thought it was hilarious. And then he told her about it. And I thought, oh man, she's probably hates me. She doesn't like me. I feel so bad about this. And she goes, I don't remember that. (laughs) She doesn't remember it fucking happening. She has no recollection of, of that ever happening. And she laughed it off. And I was like, dude, that fucking haunted me for years. And she doesn't even remember it. Which made me feel good because I was like, all right, I didn't fucking traumatize a person. But at the same time, I was like, I mean, that's a good thing, though, that I felt bad for that long because it made me not want to ever do it again. If I knew that she didn't care at all, you know, no, I still felt bad enough that I wouldn't do it again. Because after she told me that she didn't remember, I wasn't like, all right, let me go fucking rob somebody. I was like, all right. I'm glad you don't remember, and I'm also glad that I never did that again. It was fucked. It was fucked. But yeah, I did stupid shit when I was younger. 
I argued. <laughs> I get confused because there's things that I want to talk about in the podcast that I don't know if I did yet. And there are things that like, um, that like I want to talk about and then I never do. And anyway, I don't think I talked about this. I got to listen back to these podcasts. But another thing like that w- that the person didn't remember but I remember was I argued I argued with my first ever long-term girlfriend. First person I fell in love with, I argued with her one time about where her clit was. <laughs> Oh man, is that not the most insecure, uh, I just had sex for the first time, like, fucking man thing to do? A fucking little boy thing to do? I was like 17, I think. And we were talking about where her clit was. We had that sex like, what, three or four fucking times? We didn't have sex that, you know. We were, we were both, we both lost our virginities to each other. And one time I forgot, I was like... I don't remember how it started, but I was like, oh, that's where your clit is. And she was like, oh, I don't think it's there. I go, yeah, it is. It's right there. And she was like, no, I think I think it's over here. And then when she showed me where it was, I got so flustered and, like, embarrassed because I just thought of how many times I was in the wrong fucking spot. Because, you know, before you have sex, you do a lot of other things. And for me, I, you know... There was a lot of kissing, and I was a fucking boy in high school. There was a lot of fingering going on, okay? There was, all right? Okay, this is an adult podcast. There was a lot of finagling with fingers that was happening, okay? So I just thought of the hundreds of times. (laughs) I just thought of the uh, many, many times where I was not doing well, and I got very embarrassed, and I was just like, no, that's not where it is, it's there. <laughs> and she was so fucking sweet, she was the nicest person ever, she was like, oh, okay, alright. Like, she was like, maybe I'm wrong about my own anatomy, okay. <laughs> that's where mansplaining started, by the way, with me doing that to my girlfriend. <laughs> and then, uh, and then I, I, what's it called? And then I remember the next time we had sex, I went in the spot she told me and she was responding and I was like, dude, it works. <laughs> I was like, dude, this fucking works. And, uh, I just kept doing it from now, from then on. And then, uh, I never told her she was right. <laughs> I never. Because I was an insecure little douchebag, and I never told her that she was right. So re- we're still friends, so recently I told her that story, and she has no recollection of it. And again, she laughed it off. She laughed. She thought it was fucking funny. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll do that as a bit on stage. And she goes, you should definitely do it as a bit. And uh, yeah, man, that's so funny. How fucking dumb was I, dude? What a stupid fuck. What a st- you do things uh, in as a child that you're like, what a, what are you, what a moron. I think that's good, though. You should, gr- I mean, if you're not doing that, I think you're living a shitty, weird existence. If you keep growing up and you're like, I, I did nothing wrong, then I think you're probably a bad person. Um, but yeah, I feel bad. I feel bad for that, man. I feel bad for doing that. But it was fun. I mean, now it's a funny, cute story. I guess cute's the word, but uh, I just find it so funny that neither of them remember that, and it was such a fucked up thing for me, which is good. Again, I think it's good that it was, because it wasn't, you know, both those stories were stupid things I did, and uh, I'm glad that I registered them as stupid, you know? I'm glad that now I'm not arguing with women still about like, hey, no, dude, let me tell you you about your anatomy, all right? So stupid. Oh, man. Stuff like that gets weird, though. Stuff like that gets very weird. Oh, man. Mansplaining in general. It's it's very... It's a very tricky thing. Because it's true. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. I don't think you can argue that it's not a real thing. Mansplaining. It's a thing. Men... There are men who are sexist. 
who condescend to women and explain things to them that they already know because they think they don't know it because they're a woman and they're being sexist. It happens, man. But it does get hairy sometimes because a friend of mine was at work and somehow there was like a discussion of anatomy or, or there, there was some sort of, they were discussing something and it, at work he was talking to uh, one of his coworkers who was a woman and she was saying your ovaries are on, are, are on your hips. <laughs> and my friend, he's a nice guy. He's not like a, you know, he's not, I mean, as far as I know, he's not sexist. He's, he's a nice guy. And he didn't know what to do because he was like, I don't want to seem like I'm mansplaining, but also, I, like, I don't want to tell her where a woman's ovaries are, but she's pointing in the wrong spot (laughs) and that's that is a fucking difficult thing right because it's like in that moment do you do you say something or do you keep letting this person live their life saying the wrong place for where ovaries are. Like, what What if she's saying that in front of other women who don't correct her and they're just like, what are you, a fucking idiot? Or what if you, like, telling her that now, maybe it's saving her from a later moment where a woman's like, are you fucking dumb? Like, I don't know. I don't... <laughs> so he told her. He said it to her. He's like, I don't think that's where they are. I think they're, they're you know... <laughs> They're more, you know, in this region. Anyway, and and uh, she was like, are you mansplaining to me? And he goes, I don't think so. <laughs> he goes, I mean, I am explaining it to you, but I'm not, I don't, it's not for that reason. I just, you're not, I think you're wrong. And it was a very weird situation. And then they looked up a diagram together and she saw that, she saw that he was right. And she was like, oh shit, you're right. Oh, fuck. And then she like was happy that he did that, but that's a fucking weird, hairy situation, man. That's a difficult situation to be in because you don't want to be a piece of shit, but at the same time, you don't want to be a piece of shit, you know? You don't want to be the guy to not inform somebody, but you also don't want to be the guy to inform somebody when they don't need to be, you know what I'm saying? Anyway. Tricky stuff, man. Tricky fucking situation. Uh, wow. I didn't get to any of the stuff I want to talk to this week. I <laughs> talk about this week. I got it's all fucking a bunch of other shit. Anyway, what should I talk about now? I talked about one thing. The one thing I wanted to talk about was the fucking calling somebody by the wrong name. But that's about it. I mean, we got time left in this podcast to knock out some of these subjects. Okay, I'll talk about this. Sometimes you go on a date and... You know, you're on a date with an awesome person. You're into them. They're attractive. They're fun. They're smart. You know, they're, they're a desirable person. And other people at the bar don't give a fuck that you're on the date and they come up and they try and start talking to the person you're on a date with. Um, and some people I know get very aggressive, like they get territorial and sh- like she's not, she's a person, okay? It's like she's not territory for you to mark, dude. She's a person who's on a date with you, Okay. And it's like people get vicious. People are like, "Why the fuck are you talking to this person I'm on a date with?" Like men and women. I was on a I was a, I was on a date with with somebody recently who was like, "Yeah, if somebody started talking to you right now, I'd get in her face." Which I mean, I thought you know, I was okay with. I was like, "That'd be fucking cool if that happens." I don't know. Honestly, for some reason, for some reason, I like that. If I'm with somebody and uh, they're like about to get into a fight with somebody, I don't know. It turns me on. I don't know why. 
I don't know why. I like I like when I don't know. I guess it shows strength. I don't know. I like when the person I'm with is like ready to fucking throw down with somebody. He's ready to fucking take someone to the mat, dude. I like that. But uh anyway, so that happens. People come up and start talking, okay? And friends of mine are always like they get insecure in that moment or they get competitive in that moment. And I don't understand that. I've never understood it. Why get competitive in that moment? Right? Because you're a cool person, man. The person's on a date with you for a reason, right? They're also into you. Okay? So if a guy comes over, don't get aggressive towards him. Just talk to him, you know? Be, he, start, he starts hitting on the person you're with, be a part of it. Start hitting on him, dude. I do that all the time. <laughs> when a guy starts hitting on a girl I'm on a date with, I start flirting with the dude. And he's very thrown off by it and either gets uncomfortable and walks away or he's like, you know, he keeps going. And then once he walks away, I tell the person I'm with, I'm like, I'm going to fuck that guy. <laughs> And every time they la- they either laugh or they're like, what? or And I go, I'm going to fuck. Dude, if I'm- that guy came over to talk to me, not you, dude. Are you kidding me? And she's- and then it becomes a fun like game where she's like, oh, wait, what? No, no, he was talking to me. And I'm like, no, he was talking to me, dude. I'm going to fuck that guy before you do. Are you out of your mind? And then it becomes a fun game that you're having instead of, like, this guy trying to steal somebody from you. Also, the person who's getting hit on, right, that you're on a date with somebody, if she gets up and leaves with the guy who was hitting on her, that's good for you, dude. You know? That's a win for you. Because if some random douche could just take this person from you, then that's not a person you want to hang out with. What the fuck? What I'm saying is if you get insecure about shit like don't get insecure about shit like that. Know that you're better than a random douche who interferes on a date, okay? Know that you're better than that guy. So don't get nervous when he comes over. Go, "Oh, this guy's the bad option." Okay? I'm the good option. And if she chooses him, whatever, man. Then I'll find somebody who has better taste. <laughs> I don't want this to come off cocky. I feel like this comes off very douchey and cocky. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I just feel bad because there's a lot of guys I know who are who are g- good. They're like they're they're people who are are fun and worth being with, and they get so fucking in their head, dude. And they just gotta calm down. Like I I think I said this in the first podcast. Calm down, dude. It's all good. It's all good. All right. Somebody went on a date with you. They're laughing, you're laughing, you're having a good time. Somebody interferes on it, fuck them, dude. They don't matter. They're not a part of the date. They're just a bystander observing. Okay? Keep it between you two. Don't don't let somebody take the energy away. You make it a game between you two. I'm telling you, next if that happens, Start flirting with the guy. I'm telling you, it's 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 a good move. And it's fun, dude. It's fun. Who gives a shit, dude? Flirt with the guy. Maybe you get his number. Who knows? Maybe then next time you go on a date with him, see what happens. Who the fuck knows, man? Maybe you were des maybe that guy hitting on her was just a mis- uh, you know, the greatest mistake that guy ever made in his life because now it led him to you and you guys fall in love and hit it off and you know, who knows what'll happen? I don't know. I'm just saying there's no benefit to getting angry or aggressive in those situations. And I've seen so many people do that and it's just, I don't know, it, it's weird. I don't even know I don't it's, you know, it's not this is not a big issue. I just something I observed and annoyed me. Uh, who knows? Anyway, See, all these topics, I think they're good, and then I read them off, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to even talk about that shit. I don't know. I feel like I've talked about a lot of things on this podcast that I wasn't expecting, so fuck it. I'll talk about this. I feel really bad about how little I I think about my ex. (laughs) 
Oh man. Oh, I'm laughing because I really feel it. I feel bad. I feel uh, yeah. I we me and her haven't been broken up that long. I think it's been like five months, or it's coming on five months. But I had to count it the other day. <laughs> Because I thought it was way longer. I feel like it's been years ago, you know? And that, oh man, makes me feel mean. Makes me feel shitty. I don't know why I feel that. I, and I'm wondering if other people feel that way. I guess that's why I'm talking about it. Do, have, do other, have other people been in relationship r- relationships like that? Where it's like, you dated somebody for a while. And then once it's over, two months later, you're like, oh fuck, that was a person <laughs> in my life who I cared about a lot and now I don't even they don't even slip into my brain I feel it feels so oh man it feels mean man but it's true it's true and I'm trying to be honest on this fucking podcast it's true and I don't uh, I've never had this experience before of like somebody just you don't fucking there was a very important part of your life and then you don't even think about them anymore they're just gone from you and you don't feel that sad about it. That's the fucked up part. I don't feel that sad about it. I loved my time with the person. I had a great time. It was fun. But like I don't... I don't know. I don't know. Late in life now is a weird thing. It's a weird It's a weird time now dating. Because it's... Uh, I've been in love once. And, uh, I've never been in love again. And it's weird because it makes you wonder if your definition of love needs to change or if, or if, or if love is just that rare. I tend to think love is just that rare, that there are a lot of people who define love in a certain way where they can have it a lot, but then there are other people who have it, who give more meaning to it, and they have it less, but when they have it, it means something, you know? And I rather would have that. I'd rather have it so that the definition gives it importance, you know? So that love isn't just a frivolous thing. It's You can have fun with people, you can like people a lot, you can spend a lot of time with people, but when you love somebody, it's 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 paralyzing man it fucking puts you in a goddamn love coma like you are you are in a deep slumber with somebody that you don't want to wake up from you know like love is you looking at somebody going oh man you're gonna fuck up years of my life (laughs) that's what love really is oh you're gonna fuck up Three years of my life in a happy way and then five years in a depressing way, huh? Because there's going to be the three great years, the two not so good, then you break up. Then uh, then what? Then it's two more, no, three more of just like, ah, oh, man, I miss that person. Do I meet another person? Who knows? And then at the end of those three years, you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine now. I'm fine and indifferent now, and I don't know if I'll find anybody else. And all of a sudden, somebody hits you out of nowhere, and then you're like, fuck, I'm in love again. Yeah, love is committing uh, committing to being very happy and very depressed for uh, more time than you want to be. That's why I think love is. But it's always worth it, man. It's worth it. There's a reason why when... I mean, for me, and other people who I know who who have their heart broken I mean actually every person I, I've known who has had their heart broken they describe the experience of it as the, you want to die you do you want to fucking you just want to be not alive anymore you don't want to kill yourself you just want to fucking you just want a truck to hit you you know and it's because love feels that good that's why it makes sense that you want to die when it's gone because you're like That was so fucking intense and amazing. That was the best feeling I ever had. And now I don't have it? I might as well fucking die. 
Like, it, logically, that makes perfect sense. And uh, I think that's why people pare down their, their definition of love, because they don't... Because... You know, maybe that's unhealthy to th see love like that. To see love as such an intense thing that when it's gone, you want to die. But that's, but you don't, but even if I you change your definition of love, you'll still have like, you'll be like, oh, love is this mediocre thing, but also intense love is this fucking, th you know what I'm saying? Like that feeling of love still exists in some degree. You're just opening the degrees of love. I hope that makes sense. I don't I don't really know. But uh yeah, I don't know, man. Who knows what's going to happen. I'm just having fun right now and uh we'll see. We'll see. I'm not looking for it. I'm just uh trying to have as much fun as possible and see what happens, you know? Anyway, uh yeah, we got fucking 5 seconds left in this timer, but we got a little bit more on the goddamn camera. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, I had a fucking amazing time as always. Uh, said a lot of crazy shit. I hope it was fun for you guys. It was fun for me. And, uh, yeah. I hope you guys have a lovely week. And, uh, I'll see you on the next one. Alright, bye. Love you motherfuckers. See ya. <laughs>